Hello there. Michel Barnier, the EU Brexit negotiator, is still demanding that the ECJ must have jurisdiction over the UK after we leave the European Union. Mr Barnier is insisting that the ECJ has jurisdiction over EU citizens living in the UK after Brexit. That is an EU red line. The UK says that the ECJ will have no say in UK affairs after Brexit Day. That was a UK red line until Theresa May talked about a transition period during which the ECJ would have the say. But after that period, it would be the UK only. But the EU, as ever, is pushing for more. Our citizens will be able to invoke the rights as defined by the withdrawal agreement before UK courts, said Mr Barnier. We agreed to guarantee for the citizens concerned that the UK will apply EU law concepts in a manner that is consistent with EU law after Brexit. But we failed to agree that the European Court of Justice must play an indispensable role in assuring this consistency. This is a stumbling block for the EU. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the UK must apply UK law in a manner that is consistent with UK law after Brexit. Neither EU law nor the ECJ should come into it at all. So it's a good thing we haven't agreed to any ECJ say, and we should not care if this is a stumbling block for the EU. When looking at concepts like this, it is a good idea to use a ludicrous example to get the message across. Say we agreed to the terms Brussels is trying to impose on us, and a couple of years after Brexit, the EU passed a law to say that all EU citizens living in the UK must be given a free house and £50,000 a year for life. Now, it's an EU law, enforceable by the ECJ, so we would have to comply or be in breach of our own agreement. Now, I know that's an outlandish example, but it does indicate the stupidity of any UK government that would even contemplate giving an outside power authority over any part of our legal processes. It is completely clear that the UK must be totally free to make its own laws and judgments post-Brexit day. Anything else is a nonsense. Personally, I had been prepared to give Mrs May the benefit of the doubt after she made what was touted as her Brexit deadlock-breaking speech. I was hoping this would prove to be a take-it-or-we-walk offer, knowing that the EU would never agree to it. But on learning that she may have collaborated with the EU on part of it prior to going to Florence, or even telling her colleagues... This leaves me with the distinct impression that she might not be that bright after all. What on earth was she doing agreeing wording with the other side that has now effectively moved the negotiation onto EU territory without getting anything in return? Then consider that Donald Tusk, the European Council President, has told our Prime Minister that the UK needs to give more before progress can be made. Things are moving along nice and slowly now as far as the EU and our in-house Remainers are concerned. The only people that want Brexit sorted in a hurry is the UK Leave camp. The rest are more than happy to string everything out for as long as possible to lead us to what they want. A second referendum, or better still, a government that would bypass the people and take us straight back in. But going back on Brexit will inevitably mean joining Schengen and the Euro and surrendering our tax system as well as our foreign and defence policies to the EU elite. As time goes on, fewer and fewer Brits will want to sign up to that, especially as they watch Eurocrat after Eurocrat on their TVs trying to dictate terms to them. The Remain hand in this international poker game will become less attractive as each day passes. So far from delays helping the Remain side, it will just get up UK voters' noses as well as making the Tories look weak and indecisive. To be honest, we are now well past the point of walking away from the talks. Now a bit of good Brexit news. 
I do like bringing these little snippets to people's attention. The number of what are called high net worth individuals in the world has increased to 16.5 million in 2016. That's an increase of 7.5% on the year before. These people are worth a total of $63.5 trillion. The definition of a high net worth individual is someone who has assets of at least $1 million, excluding their primary residence. So what's the Brexit connection, you ask? Well, the Cap Gemini New Wealth Report said that very few millionaires had left the UK after Brexit and that the flow of millionaires into the UK is continuing. However, I do take exception to the way they phrased it and you can see why from the following quote. Going forward, we expect high net worth individual migration into the UK to continue despite Brexit, the report said. In particular, we expect large high net worth individual inflows from France, China, India, the Middle East and Africa into the UK. And all this after we were told that there would be a millionaire flight if we dared to vote to leave the EU. Actually, it may have nothing to do with Brexit at all. They may just view the UK as a pleasant and safe place to live, work and play. What do you think? Please leave a comment below. Thank you. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.